Hello, my name is Libby Owen, um, and this is my final exam. I'm going to be answering each of the questions and reading them aloud. Um, so question number one, what was your favorite topic or one you feel is most applicable to your career covered in this semester? Explain why. So my favorite topic that was covered this year was the topic of microbial infections of the human body. Um, this topic is most applicable to my future career as well um, because I am currently in pursuit of becoming a nurse. Um, I thought this topic was so interesting because I really enjoyed learning about how big of an impact um, microbes have on the human body. I believe the part that interested me the most about this topic was the concept of wound infections. Um, this concept was so interesting to me because it was such a it had such a wide variety of infections ranging from small wounds um, such as human bites um, all the way to flesh eating disease. Um, this concept in particular was so interesting to me because I believe that it is so important um, as a future nurse to understand the variety of different diseases, wounds, and infections. Um, I think this is such a crucial thing for nursing majors to learn because um, it shows how a tiny little microbe can impact a life. Um, this is also really important for me to learn because it allows me to decipher between all the different microbial possibilities. Um, my second question is, if you had an unknown microbe, what steps would you take to determine what kind of microbe it is? Are there particular characteristics you'd search for? Um, so I think that if I discovered an unknown microbe, I would first examine um, its outward characteristics, such as like overall appearance and color. Um, I think I would also examine the kind of environment that the microbe was in when I was handed the microbe. Um, such as was it in a cool temperament, a hot temperament, um, did I find it on the ground, like, you know, stuff like that. Um, additionally, I think that an examin examination of the microbe can be run to determine what it is. Um, we all know that viruses cannot do anything if they do not have a host, um, and viruses are also surrounded by a capsid, making it identifiable under a microscope. Um, uh, if it was a fungi, I believe, fungi, fungi, I'm not sure how to say that, but I believe it could be identified under a microscope due to the fact that it is a eukaryote um, compared to viruses and bacteria, which are both prokaryotes. Um, and then finally, another way um, that I could identify the bacteria would be by examining if it contained peptidoglycan, which is found within the cell wall of the bacteria. Um, I think, oh, and then another way that I could um, examine this, this um, substance, this microbe, um, is completing an experiment um, where I tested the microbe on an agar plate. Um, I would do this in order to determine what kind of microbe it is and examine it um, with nutrient broth and all that stuff. Just run a little agar plate and inspect it after um, incubation. So I believe that if it was um, bacteria that it would most likely reside in colonies. Um, and again, this is most, most of the experiment would be from visuals. So it's not in completely the best way to tell, but it is one way that we can get information. Um, if the microbe was a fungi, it would be easy. It would be pretty easy to tell um, majority of fungal microbes found on agar plates from what I have seen in my experience so far almost have a distinct fuzzy like look. Um, and then if it was a virus, it would most likely continuously spread across the agar plate. Um, the third question is, imagine you're interacting with an individual that does not think vaccines are effective. Using your knowledge of blah, 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 describe how you might converse with this individual and educate them on vaccines. So I would say to this person that um, one benefit of vaccinations is the concept that microbes can expand your immune system. One example of this um, can be found within the old friends hypothesis. The old friends hypothesis claims that the longer we are exposed to these microbes, the more that they're going to be our friends throughout our lifetime. Um, so for things such as allergy, asthma, stuff like that. 
Um, due to our immunity and susceptibility to certain microorganisms, early exposure overall will benefit humans. Um, the immune system will then begin allow, allow these microbes to live in our bodies and be used to fight against other potential diseases. Um, the way that vaccinations work is that the vaccine enter, um, the vaccine itself contains um, aspects of a weakened disease or virus. Um, and then once injected, that weakened virus or disease will enter your body and the immune system takes off in fighting it. This allows for your immune system to remember what you have and it will create a protein um, for your body to remember how to fight against it or how to make your symptoms a little, a little more bearable. Um, your body learns how to prevent against these viruses um, and knows for future reference how to fight off or slow that disease. Vaccines are crucial to ensuring the slow of the spread of disease, especially with how easily viruses and diseases can spread. Viruses, diseases, and bacteria are all very, very contagious, but they're also very preventable. And then for my fourth question, um, it is describe two positive and negative relationships humans have with microbes and advantages and disadvantages. <clears throat> So the first positive relationship I want to talk about with humans and microbes is the concept of medication. Um, microbes are very beneficial in our lives, but one of the most interesting ways that they impact our lives is within medication. Um, the medication penicillin actually contains the microbe of a fungi, and fungi is in this common medication and is used because it creates the products that we need for this from this antibiotic. Um, fungi are really helpful in, help, in helping treat infection and overall benefit the human system. Um, fungi can be really beneficial in cases like this. And then another way, oh, can be very beneficial in um, cases like this um, because they help us fight off infection and things such as that. So that is how they um, positively impact us and how they give us an advantage. Um, and then another way in which microbes can positively impact the human body is they help us um, obtain NO and O2 and a lot more than just that, but those are two of the main ones. Um, and microbes actually produce a lot of O2 for the world, um, which is very beneficial to the world because it really helps us with um, oxygen production and things such as that, especially in the climate that we live in um, this day and age. And then another way that microbes can help us is by helping our bodies break down cellulose. So naturally our bodies cannot break down cellulose by itself, but we have microbes in our bodies that help us do that, um, which is obviously an advantage. Otherwise we would have quite a buildup of cellulose. And then, and then switching into the negative aspects, um, one way that a microbe can be negative is within the co concept of harmful bacteria within the human body. So bacteria within the body, while it's not always negative, can be very harmful. Um, the common misconception that stomach ulcers are caused by stress um, is actually incorrect. Stomach ulcers are caused by bacteria. Um, the microbe can enter a person's stomach and can cause this ulcer to form. Uh, while we learn more about microbiology and the power that these organisms have, the more we learn about how they react in our bodies. And I think that it's so interesting to learn about how this microbe can create such an impactful thing, especially within a stomach ulcer. Stomach ulcers are no fun. So um, I think that's super interesting. And that is one disadvantage of, that, of microbes is that if you do have some bad bacteria in your stomach, you could form a stomach ulcer. Um, another way microbes can be harmful is by the concept of pathogens. Um, pathogens often are microbes, which means that microbes have killed many people. <laughs> um, I remember in one of the lectures I heard um, that micro or that pathogens have killed more people than wars. Um, sorry, my phone was dying, um, which is crazy to think about. That is crazy. Um, but um, these microbes can produce so much damage to the world. Um, they can cause disease, disease can kill, which will therefore make the microbes have a negative connotation within this light of pathogens. Um, however, through scientific research, we have been able to discover how microbes can both positively and negatively impact our world. 
Um, and then my final question, many applications of microbes exist, list and describe five uses. So the five I chose are really random, um, but one of the ways that microbes can be used is to create alcohol substances such as beer. Um, microbes are used in beer by al alcoholic fermentation by yeast. Um, and the Saccharomyces, I hope I'm saying that right, Saccharomyces within the beer is what ferments the yeast, which turns into sugar, which then will form the beer. Um, and um, there are several different strains of the Saccharomyces, which is why we have so many different flavors of beer. So that is one use um, for microbes is alcoholic fermentation. Um, another one I want to look at is assisting with biodegradation. Um, one example being within an oil spill. We learned about this in class. Um, when there's an oil spill, microbes can prevent or dilute them because they can destroy or weaken the hydrocarbons within the oil, um, which will therefore slow and um, stop the oil spill. Um, microbes have the uh, ability to perform aerobic respiration, which also will break down the oil by oil degradation. Um, another way that microbes are used is within food preservation. Um, microbes can help slow the spread of a certain bacteria that causes food to go badly more quickly. Um, they also help slow down the oxidation of fats, making that food last longer. Um, and then microbes can also um, fer be fermenters, which um, makes some of the food we eat have a longer shelf life. Um, my next one is through vitamins. Um, bacteria within the human body is known to produce the vitamin B12 and vitamin K. And these vitamins are both crucial to having a healthy and happy life. Um, and so the concept that these microbes help us obtain these um, vitamins is really cool and very, very important. And then the final example where microbes can be used is seen within biotechnology. And I very much enjoyed learning about biotechnology um, through this class. I think it is so fascinating. Um, so I was really excited to be able to learn more about this. Um, but the cultures within the microbes help researchers gain si researchers and scientists gain more knowledge and more materials um, of the life of biology. And these cultures not only provide scientists with a base knowledge of microbes, but it also allows them to place them in different environments to test for their attributes and sustainability. I think that biotechnology and microbes are some of the coolest things ever. Like they are so cool. Um, so the concept that um, microbes are assisting so much with biotechnology these days is really, really fascinating. Um, but overall, microbes play such a big role in um, society today, and microbes are one of the many wonders of the world, and I'm very grateful that I have had the opportunity to gain more knowledge about them. Thank you so much.